Hello friends. Last week in my video, I put forth a behavioral finance theory based on the work of Edwin Kopak and told you that markets are resilient and they tend to put the worst behind them between 11 to 14 periods. In this week's video, in addition to all the other usual studies, I'm going to discuss whether the worst is finally over and the markets can pick up the threads where they left them off from and move ahead. Let's dive right in and on your screen right now is the market roundup window, which tells you that the indices just managed to gain and keep their head above the water. The uh, US dollar index rose 59 basis points and that was one reason why uh, the emerging markets, including India, uh, uh, basically labored under the weight of a rising dollar. Silver came down due to profit taking, but gold just managed to uh, hold on to some gains. Crude oil and natural gas rose up. Now, these are mild concerns because inflation can start rising if gas and oil prices continue to rise. The USD INR, which is the dollar versus the Indian rupee, gained 63 basis points. That means the rupee weakened against the dollar, another drag for equity sentiments. 10-year benchmark bond yields rose 8 basis points, which means bond prices eased a little. The NSE gained a little over half a percent in market capitalization, which tells me that the rally was uh, somewhat broad based, even though marginal. MWPL continued to rise, which is usual till the third week of any derivative cycle and the US markets provided headwinds. They basically provided resistance because all three indices were negative. Now for the MWPL, it uh, basically tells me that risk appetite improved on a week on week basis. And uh, uh, the second week after expiry, we are now at 30.65. In the previous uh, monthly expiry, we were at 29.66. And in the expiry of December, we were 30.83. So risk appetite is more or less attempting to reach levels where it was in December at this time of the month. That's a marginal improvement, I would say. Now for the uh, stock and index futures turnover. Remember, these are three cumulative expiries. So this is uh, uh, February, March and April. Turnover has come down pretty sharply across the board. Not very surprising because uh, uh, retail traders are nervous. And as a matter of fact, retail traders for the 10th consecutive session have basically resorted to unwinding their net long positions. By net long positions, I'm talking of long minus short. For 10 sessions, the retail guys who've been doing all the heavy lifting since the COVID based lockdowns were imposed are now unwinding long. So uh, lower turnover basically tells you that retail risk appetite is overall lower. Now for the advanced decline ratio, which uh, slid to 1.05 as compared to 1.11 in the week prior, that tells you that uh, uh, buying conviction amongst the one marshmallow traders, intraday traders was somewhat lower. The index itself has gained 0.01% on a week on week basis. So uh, it basically tells you that uh, 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 the bulls are lacking force to uh, trigger a big ticket rally as of now. Let's take a look at the basis chart. Basis is nothing but uh, the uh, premium enjoyed by futures over spot. The basis has shrunk very sharply. I had told you a fortnight ago that the kind of basis that the bank nifty saw in excess of uh, 275 rupees was unsustainable. Empirical statistical evidence had told me that these kind of levels tend not to last. And sure enough, you've seen huge amounts of basis erosion. Part of it could be explained by uh, 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 maturity of the derivative cycle. As expiry comes closer, Traders have fewer days to play around with and therefore they are willing to pay a smaller premium. But selling at higher levels is also another reason. I'm watching out for basis inversion, which means the futures trading at a discount to cash. If that happens, selling pressure would have escalated. 
Now, these are metrics that I up update on my social media accounts every day. Do connect with me on my uh, free Telegram channel. We uh, uh, basically don't give any stock, uh, stock tips, but uh, it's a totally free channel where we put up all our research in one place. Now for the impetus, both the Nifty and the Bank Nifty impetus has come down. As a matter of fact, Nifty's impetus is at an all time low in 20 period chart that we are looking at. And the Bank Nifty's impetus is also in the lower end of the 20 week range. That tells you that last week's gains were very insipid. They lacked the momentum and the force that the bulls should have had. And it was more of short covering rather than fresh buying. Now, this is again another aspect that I have been putting up on my social media accounts that short covering is cushioning and bowing the markets. Let's now take a look at the LWTD. This is another exclusive indicator you won't find anywhere on the internet. LWTD has risen to 0 0.10, which means it's finally up in positive territory after staying in the negative for five consecutive weeks. Now that tells you that buying support on declines might just improve in the coming week. This is something that I'm going to discuss in greater detail in a special segment that I've recorded is the worst over. Friends, I come to the bond markets, which you know uh, by now that I, I monitor very, very keenly because it helps me trade equities and commodities even better because the cost of funds is something that discerning investors look at very, very seriously. What you are seeing is a weekly chart of the Indian 10 year benchmark bond yield, which has risen in the week gone by. That tells you that bond prices have come down. Now that creates a mark to market pressure on banks, which are the largest holders of bonds in their investment portfolios. This explains to you why the bank Nifty did not rise as much as it could have because bond prices were lower. Will bond yields rise up or will they breach the uh, uh, 7.10 threshold, which has provided support ever since uh, uh, the calendar year 2022 has started? Now, this is a trillion dollar matter for me. Would I be writing out fresh checks in fixed income investments? Yes, laddering will continue. As a matter of fact, on our, our free Telegram channel, I have uh, written detailed posts on whether you should be going all out and writing the last check in your checkbook towards fixed income investments and also about how the Indoor Municipal Corporation is now uh, issuing uh, a 244 crore uh, a bond issue for uh, their solar power plant and how state governments as well as municipalities, city municipalities will be regularly approaching the bond markets to raise funds for infrastructure and town planning. Now, this area is like the IPO. When too many IPOs come in, uh, the primary market sucks out money from the secondary market. Now, if too many bond floats come in and large size, the Indoor uh, the Municipal Corporation is a very tiny 244 crore issue. So 244 crores is not going to make too much of a dent in liquidity. But if you have something like uh, the Konkan Railways Corporation, which came out in the 1990s, that was a mega bond issue. Or if you have the NHAI type bond issues, which are going to hit the market regularly, you will see that uh, 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 liquidity will uh, uh, get impacted. So let's keep a watch on cost of funds as we go ahead. Friends, I now come to the Bank Nifty, which uh, basically led the surge higher and it rose on four out of five trading sessions, as you can see on the daily chart on your screen. The index has gained 0.14%, but it has still failed to break out above the 41,840 level, which is a trend determining level of sorts. Now, this was the swing high of September 2022. 
and it provided support to the market in December 2022 as well as January of 2023. So a violated uh, uh, support has now become a resistance and what I would want is the bank nifty to go above this uh, threshold uh, providing a resistance is the uh, uh, 25 day exponential moving average which is a month long holding on cost of an average bull unless this threshold is overcome sustainably with continuous closings above this with higher volumes and open interest i would say that the bank nifty will continue to remain under pressure. Let's take a look at the weekly chart where the price is above its 25 week exponential moving average, which is a six month long holding on cost of an average bull. The power candle logged a fortnight ago, which is a red big candle has yet to be overcome on the upside. So uh, unless that really happens, bulls are still not back in charge. They might have sustained the relentless selling but they've still not got domination back. So unless that really happens, which uh, will come above 43,000 on the bank nifty spot, I would say that uh, uh, the bull market hasn't started yet. In the week before last, this index was number three on our highest volatility list, the statistical beta counters that we maintain in house. It fell three notches to number six, which is welcome because a lower volatility means a smaller challenge to retail investors and traders. Last week, I advocated a range between 43,050 on the upside and 39,950 on the downside, which held perfectly well because the range was very narrow. In the coming week, I expect a range between 43,050 on the upside and 40,075 on the downside. Now, this narrow range is due to the low base effect of uh, the intraweek range of last week. It is quite likely that the range be penetrated and overcome in either direction because these small ranges don't tend to last. Friends, the bank nifty done. I now come to the nifty 50, which gained 0.01% and it logged gains on two out of five trading sessions last week. Here again, the price remains below its uh, uh, monthly moving average, which tells me that the short term outlook also remains still under pressure. The 18,115 level, which I want as a prerequisite to be overcome, has still not happened last week. So bare minimum criteria for the bulls to show signs of revival is 18,115. Unless and until that happens, I would say that uh, the bulls are still under pressure. Take a look at the weekly chart. Here again, you've seen a very small uh, candle, which means the intraweek range was uh, smaller. Price is above its 25 week exponential moving average, which is a six month holding on cost of an average bull. So the medium term outlook still holds. Mean reversion is over, which means the price coming to test the uh, a six month long holding uh, average price. If it starts staying below this average, which means not just mean reversion, but weakness could be starting. All is forgiven to the bulls if they push the nifty above the 18,115 level. Last week, uh, the nifty was at number 13 on our in-house statistical beta list of most volatile counters. It slipped seven notches to number 20, which is good because low volatility, like I explained earlier, is good for a retail average retail trader. Last week, I advocated a range between 18,350 on the upside and 17,350 on the downside, which held perfectly well. No thanks to the very small and tight weekly range of uh, the Nifty last week. The coming week is likely to see a range between 18,350 on the upside and 17,375 on the downside. Here again, the range appears narrow because the base effect or the intra-week range of last week itself is quite small. Trade very light because the volatility is far from over. 
Friends, I now come to the special segment that I promised you uh, uh, about in the beginning of this video. Is the worst over? Now, last week, I explained to you why Edwin Kopok's theory is absolutely critical for every trader. Edwin Kopok's oscillator, if you Google search it, specializes in one and one thing only. That is to find when the bearishness is over. It's not half as good in trying to uh, uh, spot tops in the market or end of bull runs in the market, but it's very good in spotting bottoms. So 11 to 14 periods. Now, whether it is 11 to 14 days, weeks and months, depending on whether it's a short term, medium term or long term outlook that you're looking at tells me that the worst in the absolute near term may be over. But first, you need to realize two things about what's going on in the market right now. Number one, the Adani issue is not going away anywhere anytime soon. You can't wish it away. It will persist, possibly spill over to the next financial calendar year also, because this will become an election issue in 2024. And secondly, which is a positive. If the first one was a negative that the issue is not going away, the second one is a positive that markets are very resilient beings. They tend to overcome uh, shocks. They get used to uh, the same thing over and over coming up again. They brush those things aside and they get back to business as usual. The prime example are the videos of people being beheaded by the ISIS in 2014. Initially, whenever these videos would come, financial markets would crumble. But hey, as and when uh, the markets got used to the idea that this keeps happening, they started rising again. So barring unforeseen circumstances, yes, if, if more developments on the Adani front come in, more news uh, 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 triggers come in, the markets might get jittery here and there. But overall, I think the sting or the, the burning sensation of a hurt that the market is feeling at this point in time will heal as time progresses. You will realize that the impact of news triggers will get smaller and smaller in terms of price and briefer and briefer in, in terms of uh, time. So this is a persistent issue. It will last, but the markets will get over these triggers. So moving over to the final bit of uh, statistical evidence where we basically gauge the retail risk appetite of traders by the turnover that they've generated in various segments of the FNO space. Now this again is our exclusive in-house study. You will not get anywhere on the internet. This is thanks to our in-house statistical trading model, the IBEX. Look at the sky blue line on the daily chart on your screen. This is the uh, uh, stock options turnover. Stock options turnover has contributed the highest percentage of the turnover in many, many weeks to the overall market. Even though the overall turnover was low, the contribution by stock options was higher. That means retail risk appetite actually improved last week. The army green or the olive green color line is the stock futures turnover that also rose to levels higher than the prior week's Friday. That tells me that risk appetite in stock futures also was higher. So retail guys are actually brushing off too much of a fear mongering and getting back to business as usual. Index futures turnover which is basically a sign of lower retail risk appetite because indices are less uh, volatile as compared to stocks. Index futures turnover is flat but remained buoyant and firm. Now let's see the next chart. Sure enough, index options turnover, which is a signal of the least amount of risk appetite. The turnover has fallen to multi-week low. If this turnover was high, I would say that the retail is running away from risk, but the retail has actually reduced their uh, exposure on index options and taken more exposure 
in stock futures and options. That means overall risk has gone up. Friends, I've recorded shots about this aspect as to what happens when uh, uh, traders shift from futures to options. You can uh, uh, please uh, uh, refer to that video for a better understanding of what I'm trying to say because statistics talk to traders about whether they should be buying or selling. It is we traders who need to listen to the message of this market. So you can take the help of that video here. Friends, I now come to the last uh, segment of the market, uh, the most popular one for statistically minded traders, where I give you five stocks which gained the most amount of uh, statistical impetus on Friday, where you take small exposure, wait for large price moves, and five stocks that lost the most amount of impetus on Friday, where you take large price moves, wait for small exposure. This is for scalpers. Now, do note that this list is valid only for Monday. If you need to be updated about this list, Tuesday to Friday, the uh, free Telegram channel that we run is the only place where I update this data. So do take the effort of uh, joining the free channel. On your screen now is the list where statistical uh, uh, impetus uh, gainers list is led by Tata Steel, followed by Trent. Number three, Cummins. Number four, ABB. Number five, United Breweries. Now, impetus losers for the day where you take big exposure, wait for small price moves on Monday is led by Dixon. Number two, Concord. Number three, Bajaj Auto. Number four, Tata Communications. And number five, ONGC. Friends, I've been recording a lot of shots and you've been appreciating those and do continue to tell me in the comment section as to what you think about our work and how it helps you become better traders. Before I log off from this video, a, a reminder to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you haven't already done so, click on the bell icon to receive instant alerts about fresh videos being put about you. And help me reach out to fellow smart, like-minded traders and investors like yourselves by sharing my work with your friends. Thank you for your patience. I wish you have a very, very profitable week ahead. Take care. Bye-bye.